I want, to, I want to tell you something. I just thank God for this word and everything that has been happening today. I think it's the will of God. Um, I have a message for you, and I believe within my heart that it's the word of God and it's from God. Um, the message is tied to... <laughs> okay, all right. I, I want you to look at your neighbor, okay? You just, just grab the person next to you, all right? Now, I'm going to tell you the message, and I'm going to tell them what I'm saying, Okay? Now, the title of the message is this. You better recognize, say it. You better recognize who I am. Who I am. Maybe, maybe they don't believe you. Leave them, find somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell, tell, tell this new question. You better recognize, you better recognize who, I am. who I am. Again, you better recognize. You better for your work today and I bless you because you are God. You are God of my fathers and my father's fathers. I give you praise because today I know that your word is going to break yokes today, lift up everybody and today we will recognize who we are in you in the name of God the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus God. Please guide my speech today, guide my tongue. Let my word today bring glory to your name in Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Before you sit, I want to give a big high five to the person standing beside you and say, Welcome to the Christ. You may be seated in the presence of God. You may be seated in the presence of God. Um, part of what is really driving me crazy in this generation today, or in my generation, is people have no idea who they are. Well, I'm not that old, well, I'm not that young or so, but I realize one thing, well, based on the country I live in, people have no idea who they are. Christians have no idea who they are. Christians, for example, Christians will tell you who they are based on their circumstances, based on how unbelievers define them. People could tell you, well, I did a lot of experiments, I'm a scientist, and I did this. I kind of asked people, um, please, who are you? Well, the guy said, well, I'm James. So, well, I didn't ask you what your name is. <laughs> I, who are you? I said, oh, oh, this is my driver's license, this is my passport, this is my email address. He said, I'm not asking about your identity. I'm asking you, who are you? And the guy got upset. What do you want from me, man? My, my, uh, my social security number, my, my, my family, my status, or oh, he's a doctor now. Like, my status, oh, what do you want? He said, don't be upset. I just want to know who you are. Who are you? It's like, okay, I'm confused. What do you mean by who I am? Imagine this. Um, imagine someone who is about to commit suicide. Now, if you ask them that question, who are you? What answer do you think you'll get from them? I imagine someone who decided to become a prostitute. And if you ask them, who are you? What answer do you think you'll get from them? Now, imagine someone who just took a gun and started killing people. If you ask them before they did what they did, who are you? What answer do you think you will get? Now, if I ask you this question today, who are you? What answer will I get from you? Well, you just told your neighbor, you better recognize who I am. Well, I've got a question for you. Who are you? Um, are you you? Because people said that was who you are. If you look at yourself in the mirror, do you say, yeah, my name is Daniel? and I'm from Nigeria. You know, being in Nigeria is a very wonderful thing. I wish I was sitting down here. Being in Nigeria is really great. Many years ago, uh, Dr. Len had an experience in his office. One Nigerian man walked into his office and said, do you know who I am? <laughs> that is a very popular Nigerian phrase, phrase. Do you know who I am? You ask them, they will tell you who I am. You know, it is, it's very wonderful. This, this phrase, who I am. Who I am is not defined by what, how much money you've got in your bank account. 
Who you are is not defined by how many children you have. Who you have is not de defined by how many titles you have. You can be a doctor, you can be a professor, you can be a pastor. Okay. Who you are is not de defined by what people call you. Who you are is when Jesus Christ sees you, who does he see? When God looks at you, does he cry? Or does he say, now that's my son? Do you think when Jesus Christ looks at you, he can boastfully look at the angels and say, now that is my daughter? Whatever you do, whatever any, any actions that you, 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 are, you are trying to do, every decision you make, do you ask yourself who you are before you do those things? Now this question is very simple. Who are you? But I realized one thing that the answer to that question is the most complex philosophical thing in my entire life. And to date, I'm still finding it difficult to even answer the question. But thank God, I found an answer to it. I want you to open your Bible with me to the book of Luke. Today I'm just going to move from Bible to Bible, but you don't have to open everything. Luke chapter 15. From verse 11. Luke 15 from verse 11. Now, this is a popular story. Everybody knows that story. It's the story of the lost son. You know, the story of the prodigal son. Uh, I'm going to be reading here, but just, just read along with me and just listen to me. Luke 15 from verse 11. Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after, after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. And I learned that part. Wild living. Okay? Now, after he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. Now imagine someone whose dad has real estate, the dad was very rich. How did he get low to the extent of feeding pigs? Check this out. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. And this is my favorite part, verse 17. Then he came to his senses. <coughs> Then he remembered who he was or who he is. Then he came to his senses and said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. Now, he came to his senses. That's fine. He realized who he was or who he is. That's great. But he didn't just stop there. The Bible says, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and you, and no longer want you to record your son, make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. Part of being a Christian is not just coming to church. Like some weeks ago, I, I spoke to you about, you know, commitment to your church. Part of being a Christian is not just that, um, I call it, Okay, Sunday, Sunday disease. Sunday, Sunday balance. Basically, you live for every Sunday. You don't remember to read your Bible because tomorrow is Sunday. And Daniel is going to ask you to read your Bible. You know, that's not Christianity. Let me tell you who you are. The men or the ladies who read this part in the Bible, I love it. Everything that Genesis chapter 1, everything that God created, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Let there be this, and there was that. Let, let, let there be this, let there be that, let there be that. When it came to human, God sat down and thought, let us make man in our own image. Now, God didn't say, let there be man. He could have said so. But God didn't do it. God spent some time creating you. Now, I don't really know what your philosophical ideology is about God. Dr. Leonard already touched that part last week, Sunday. I don't know what your philosophy is. Maybe you are a Big Bang theorist or you are an evolutionist. But I am here to tell you, God created you in his own image. 
The Bible says in the book of Psalms you read, okay, that God fashioned you. I love that expression. I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, uh, Pastor John told me my, my wife is pregnant. Yes, yeah, she, she is pregnant. And every now and then she sends, sends me a sound of how the baby is doing. Um, um, that is kind of what I do. You will see what a computer, like um, Uzi, you know, Echo, will show you how a baby is being formed. And you want to tell me that there is something called Big Bang Theory? I don't think so. Sam said, so my version said, I will praise you because I am complexly made. Now, I'm not a doctor, well, not a medical doctor. I'm very sure the way human being was being made in the womb is very complex. It's so complex that it's, in, it's so difficult to even explain. I will take a sperm and egg and you make me. I don't understand. Try to explain to me. I'm not that stupid. I have PhD. I don't understand. I a white cow we eat green grass and produce white milk. I don't understand. I don't understand a lot of things. How I eat something that I don't really know and I go big. Tell me all the new strengths and characteristics and everything. I don't understand. But David said, I will praise God because I am complexly made. You know what that means to be fearfully and wonderfully made? God took time. Okay? He spent time creating you. How dare you allow someone who is not even a Christian define who you are? You are a Christian. Now, if you don't know Jesus, I'm really hoping that by the end of my sermon today, you will come to understand who Jesus Christ really is. He is a man that died for your sin. The only way you can really understand who you are, you have to look at yourself through the eyes of Jesus Christ. You know, you won't fully understand who you really are until you ask God to describe to you who you are. The Bible says you can do all things through me. Oh, you need to understand something. Okay, the Bible says, says those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Now, for you to be led by the Spirit of God, you have to understand that the Spirit of God is in you. Now, that's why the Bible says, you know, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. I have a point today. For people to recognize who you are, you have to recognize who you are. Amen. The way you give yourself to me is the way I'm going to define you. If you come to me and tell me, oh, I'm Dr. Len, I'm going to call you Dr. Len. If you come to me and say, oh, I'm Pastor John, I'm going to tell you, call you Pastor John. If you come to me and say, oh, I'm James, I'm going to call you James. But you see, James is your name. Doctor is your title. Pastor is your title. There are no titles in heaven. God is not going to call you by your name. He knows your name here. But see, God is going to call you by how he sees you. You can be Daniel. I have a lot of friends who are Daniel. They don't know God. Daniel means God is my judge. See, we are thinking of, of names to name babies. And I, stung, I love Russian names. And I went to this Russian name database and they start giving me different meanings of different names. And I found this name, Ilya. You know the meaning of Ilya? That's called Moibok. Like, Lord is my God. And I thought about it, I remember uh, on Ilya, you know, Lenin. And I thought about him like, that guy didn't believe in God. And he's very, the Lord is my God. <laughs> Your name doesn't define who you are. What defines you are is what God sees when he sees you. Now, ask yourself this question. What does God say about me? Now, if I ask you to give me, like, you know, break your week down, everything you did in this week, who here can say everything I've done in this week, God will be very impressed? You are very sure that everything I've done this week, you can come and really record it and play it on, on, you know, on the screen. Let everybody see it. You want, sure you want us to see it? Come on, we are Christians now. Let, let's be honest. You know you are not holy. 
but I'm not holy to it. Okay, but that still doesn't mean that God doesn't love. But you shouldn't be taking that love that God has for you for granted. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God loves you so much. He gave you everything. And it defines who you are. Okay? Your money doesn't define who you are. Actually, your parents don't even define who you are. Your wife doesn't define who you are. Your job doesn't define who you are. Who you are is what God says you are. Now, you can't be living outside what God calls you to be living in and says, I, you better recognize who I am. Okay? Where I come from, when someone tells you, you better recognize who I am, they're about to start fighting. <laughs> you don't have to prove to me who you are. The Bible says, by the fruits of what they do, you will know them. I don't have to, I don't have to ask you who you are. I just have to look at you. Then I will see who you are. I love this portion of the Bible. The Bible says, it says out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. I used to ask myself this question. What, what kind of river is flowing out of your belly? When you speak, what comes out of your mouth? You know, I, I love something that Dr. Lenny said last week. He said, um, you know, a, a good man was has a hammer in there and he's trying to, you know, he's hitting something and children were surrounding him and he was asking, what are you looking for? He said, oh, we're about to see what you will say when, you, when the hammer hits your leg. <laughs> when you hit your leg on something, what do you say? When something bad happens, what do you say? Do you use the F word a lot because something bad just happened? Okay. You are Christians, and I see all of you smiling. I'm serious. We are saying there's something that Jesus Christ is coming. I'm saying this because I believe you need to hear it. My God, Jesus Christ, is coming. Your God, Jesus Christ, is coming for you. And you better be ready. He's not coming for Daniel. No, no, no. He's coming for me. He's not coming for James. It's coming for you. It's not coming for Lenny. It's coming for you. That person that he created you to be. Not the name that the name, no, but that you. It's coming for. Question is this. What have you been doing with that who that God created? This boy that God gave you, what have you been doing with it? You don't answer me question. It's a personal question. Okay. The children, for those of you who are married, the children that God gave you, what have you been teaching them? Wives, the husbands that God gave you, what have you been feeding them? Husbands, the wife that God gave you, what have you been doing to them? If you are not married, you are not in a relationship, what have you been doing to yourself or with yourself? I'm, I'm a lover of fast cars, race cars. I don't have any car, but I love fast cars. Ferrari, Lamborghini, Bugatti. I love all of them. Just looking at them. Now, you see, <laughs> and, I, and I love Formula One. I just like, Pew! you know, I, I love all those speed. Now, check this out. Do you know that some cars don't go on sales? They don't go on sales. They don't have a um, um, skip card. They don't. They, they don't have. Um, it, some cars they don't. They don't advertise them. Okay. Some cars they don't. They don't. They call them limited versions. They only make four of them in the world. Okay. Now, if God has called you a Ferrari, why are you behaving like a ladder? <laughs> okay. If God has called you a Lamborghini, why are you behaving like a like a jubilee. <laughs> Understand? Who are you? What, what has God called you? If you know that God has called me a Ferrari, why do you allow some jubilees to come and talk to you? Like, hey sister, how are you doing? Like, oh, I'm doing great. Hey brother, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Do you know you are a Ferrari? 
There are some things you shouldn't allow people to tell you because you know who you are. I just like that God gave you a divine God to you to meet you on this night. That doesn't mean that you are not a Ferrari. I don't know. Most of the greatest men in the world are teachers have told them they are stupid. That you are broke and there's nothing in your account doesn't mean that you can't be the richest man in the world. You have to recognize who you are. You have to recognize who you are. And the only way to recognize who you are is to look at yourself through the eyes of Jesus Christ. Now you have to know Jesus Christ first because before you can look at yourself through the eyes of Jesus Christ. When you look at yourself through the eyes of Jesus Christ, I can guarantee the way you perceive yourself will be different. The way you carry yourself will be different. The way you place yourself in your surroundings will be different. The way you affect your surroundings will be different. So people come into your area you want to run away because they have this thing. They are just, you know, you are always mad when you meet them. They never put on a smile on their face. According to them, there is nothing to smile about. But you see, when you know who you are, even though your present circumstance is not good, but because you know who you are, you will put on a smile on your face because you know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That your present circumstance doesn't really determine who you are. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I hope I'm not too fast for you. God loves you. He really, really loves you. Now, you may not believe that. Okay? But I want you to tell your neighbor that. You may not believe it, but just tell your neighbor, God loves you. So you are looking at you. They don't believe it. <laughs> tell them again, God loves you. <laughs> there, there is a mentality. Okay, I'm, I'm about to start. There's a mentality I call ladder mentality. Okay, I don't know. I just have something against ladder. There's a mentality I call ladder mentality. Yeah. In my house where I live, there are these guys, they just pack their ladder and every night they make noise. They just run and run and run. You won't find someone driving a Bentley running in Moscow. No way. They drive slowly. People look at them. Because that car says, look at me. No. You won't find someone driving a limousine and having a race stop. No, it's not going to happen. But it's all those guys who drive, they just drive. Yeah, check the kind of car they drive. One thing you should understand about you is this. Whatever God has called you, that's who you are. Okay? You need to come to your senses and go back to your father and talk to God. Who I am. Your grace in school don't show who you are. Okay? Your grades in school doesn't show who you are. What your boss tells you about you is not who you are. Who you are is what God says you are. And until you understand what God calls you, you will be living the Medina mentality. Until you understand what God calls you, you will be living with the Jubilee mentality. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a Jubilee mentality. It's great. One thing you should understand is this. What God calls you is important. Okay? I'm a Christian, and I don't play with words. And one thing I want to tell you today, if you don't hear anything I said today, just remember one thing. What God calls you is a fact, and nothing can change that. Nothing can change that. And stop living like someone who doesn't have a father. Things will go bad, yes. My sister just prayed about God. God is not trying to make you go over trouble. No, 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 no. He will pass through them, but nothing is going to hurt you. Because that's what God calls you. You are a fighter. You are someone who passes through trouble and nothing scares you. Because God is always with you. But you see, if you don't understand that you have a father who is always with you, you will live like an orphan. If you don't know or recognize who you are, Devils will trample against you. Some things will knock you down because you don't recognize who you are. 
Now, for a lot of, some of you who are teachers, maybe you've seen some of your students who you know that these people they have they have ability, they can do something. You keep telling them, no, no, you can do this, and instead of keep telling you, yeah, yeah, I, I, I can't. Then you, you know, it's like they're not seeing what you are seeing. Now, all of you, most of you are parents. You tell your kids, no, you can do it, and your kids keep telling you, no, I can't do it. It's like, no, no, you, you can do it. Oh, no, 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 I can't do it. That's the way God looks at some of us. God keep telling you, no, you can't do it. You tell God, God, no, I can't do it. Because you don't know who you are. Brethren, I, I, I really want to beg you today, okay, that when you leave this place, I don't want you to still have the same mentality about yourself. You act, let me say act, about yourself when you came in here today. That has something better for you. But you are not going to get that better thing until you change the way you think about yourself. Yes, I know, everyone is not about you and you and you alone. But our responsibility as Christians is to win more souls and bring more people to Christ. But you can't do that if you yourself don't understand who you are. Now, you better recognize who you are before someone recognizes who you are for you. Again, you better recognize and understand who you are before devil out there will tell you who you are or who you are not. Okay? Now, with God, all things are possible. And that's yes. It doesn't matter what difficulty you are facing. I'm telling you by faith. God, with God, all things are possible. Alright? Now, you can only ask God for help if you know that you have God by your side. I want all eyes closed today. I want all eyes closed and every head bow. Now, everything I've been saying today and I've said today might sound like blah, blah, blah to you. If you don't know Jesus, you can't go called Atheist the Basin like our Heavenly Father if God is not your Father. You don't have the right to call God your Father if God is not your Father. You don't have the right to call God to help you if you don't know Him. So, this is an opportunity today. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't have that one on one relationship with Jesus, I want you to make a decision in your heart today that you get you actually come to know Jesus. If you know Jesus and you are still struggling with some sins, that is not who you are. That is not who you are. If you know Jesus and you are still struggling with things like pornography, fornication, adultery, drinking, smoking, and all those stuffs, clubbing, whiling away, that is not who you are. That is what they will want you to believe about you. If you are a husband and you know your relationship with your wife is not good enough, that is not who you are. You need to come back to your senses. You need to come back and start knowing God. Because He is God and He loves you and He wants you to do good. But you have to understand who you are.